Hi guys, for the longest time I thought that I can't make nice hills and cliffs because I don't have access to XPS foam. Nowadays I have access to it, but it's really unwieldy, you know, you have to buy a block of like a one meter cubed and I don't, ha don't have the space to keep it in my house. Um, so I thought, why not just use cardboard? And that's how it came out. Let's see how I did it. I'm Jagelsdorf and welcome to my channel. So as always, let's start with cutting the base for a piece of terrain. As always, I'm using HDF, before I was calling it particle board, I think, or MDF, but what I'm using here is HDF which is, uh, has a little bit more of density and warps a little less. Also, if you're making a video, remember to try not to obstruct your camera and then get annoyed with the camera angle and change it. I'm just cutting a regular rectangular base. On this one, I'm only beveling the one edge because I want to have a cliff that's sloping downwards and this, is, this will be the end of the slope. Because we are making our hill out of cardboard, out of layers of cardboard, start with a scrap piece of milk packaging or whatever and just start cutting squares out. They don't need to be perfect, just make a heap of cardboard uh, that you will be later able to stack and cut as you need. And instead of measuring, because I hate measuring as always, I'm using the base as a rough template. So this stack of cardboard will determine the height of your mountain or your hill. Um, so keep that in mind. And then you can take the pieces one by one and cut them to your desired size. And you want to cut each next layer a little bit smaller if you want to have a slope like I do. In the beginning I mark out some edges with, with a marker but later I won't really bother and do it by eye. Also, remember to keep all the scrap pieces that you cut off because they come in handy in the later smaller layers. And you can also make some uh, interesting ir irregularities with your offcuts. I hope you don't mind my little fuzzy friend chiming in uh, every now and again. He likes to help his dad work. And as I said before, just keep building up your cliff or your hill as high as you want. Keep in mind the height of your miniatures for your game or your uh, whatever you're doing so that it looks realistic and so that it provides enough line of sight, blockage. And as I said before, these lovely scrap pieces can be used um, to give your hill a, bit, a little bit more characters. When I started this project, I wanted the hill to be quite flat so that I can put some uh, buildings on top, but as you see, I opted for a more naturalistic look in the end. And this is how it looks now. As you see, it's really even and rounded and I didn't really like this look. So I took my lovely trusty knife to it and made some cuts to look it to make it look a little bit more natural, a little bit more rocky. And I'm really just making some random cuts here and there um, without thinking too much about it, um, just to give it some texture and some var variety. And you can take your scissors to it, because as you see I didn't glue it to the base yet to make my job of gluing the layers together a little bit easier to give me more flexibility. So after you're happy with how your mountain looks, glue it to your base. And you can make the base flush with the hill or you can make it a little bit bigger to give you yourself some room for additional flocking and additional bushes and stuff like this. And I'm really happy with how it looks. And with a few additions it will look really awesome and you won't see the cardboard at all. Now for the magic trick that makes it look like a real rock. It's a really really old trick that I didn't ever utilize before because I never made any cliffy hills so it's also a learning process for me. What you want to do is uh, take a piece of tin foil and use it as a mold for your plaster. 
And to give it uh, a little bit more texture, I'm roughing it up a little and crimping the edges so that uh, plaster won't spill out. Um, I used a little bit too much water in my plaster mixture but because I wanted it to be a little more pourable. Uh, but in the end it wasn't really a good idea. I should have really sticked to the recipe. It would take a few minutes to harden and then you can simply peel your aluminium foil off and you can reuse it later or throw it away. But we can't really apply this big sheet of plaster to our hill so we're gonna break um, some pieces off. I start uh, with breaking them at random, smaller and bigger pieces. And I just use a hot glue gun to put them on. Yeah, and here you can see my progress with it. As you see, there is a small problem. A few pieces have fallen off because I've used too much water in my mixture and it simply doesn't stick so well to the hot glue. But if you've used the correct mixture, it will be okay. There is some spillage on the underside, so I trim it. And the next step will be covering up your steps of cardboard. And you might think I'll be using my proprietary mixture again, but you would be wrong. This time I'm using speckle or grout or however it is called, I'm not sure. But it's the filling medium for, you know, like small holes in your drywall. And there's nothing better than a fresh, undisturbed jar with a little nipple. Oh and I'm applying it with a popsicle stick and a toothpick to get into all the edges and creases between the pieces of stone. And I also have a fresh tip for anyone also making videos and tutorials. Always remember to trip your camera while at work. It's very, very important. There may be some places where you will want your mixture to be a little bit more smooth, I will be using one, a wet finger or a, or a wet brush to smooth it out. After you're done with all the small cracks in your stone and spaces between your plaster, just take a large heap of this stuff and cover your whole model with it. And as you see, it looks really awesome. It looks like stone, it blends really nice with the plaster, it hides all the steps from the cardboard, it's really great. And I noticed that there are still some places where the cardboard shows through. And so this time I'm using a little bit of my mixture to hide these places and also to give a little bit more texture. And just in the spirit of making things cheap, I decided to make another piece and this time not use any sparkle and just use my mixture just to show you that it is possible. The effects weren't as good as with sparkle but it was also perfectly serviceable. The biggest problem with my um, salt and flour mixture is that it has a lot of moisture, so you will need to put it into the oven on a very low heat for some time. And also all of this moisture made my model warp a little bit, which is also not really a good thing. But as I said, it is doable. And of course we can't forget about tripping your camera. This is really a crucial step. After you've tripped your camera two times already, I will be applying some PVA glue to apply more sand in different places to give it some more texture. The salt mixture already gives it a nice very texture, but I wanted some more variation in the grain, so that's why I'm using my bird sand. And you know the drill, spread it out with a wet brush or your finger or really anything, cover it in sand and wait for it to dry. And here you see the other hill, the first hill that I made, it's already covered in black paint, um, but I decided to sprinkle some sand after all to give it a little bit more texture as before. And the next step is putting some smaller stones on your hill to give it a little bit more of a character. I'm using broken up pieces of plaster that are always left after you've made something out of it. And I try to find some bigger and smaller pieces, apply them randomly to both hills. Working with sand and plaster and all this construction stuff is always really messy and dusty, so remember to keep your workspace clean. Now, something that I rarely use, a mixture of PVA glue, water and black paint, but I thought it will give a little bit more protection to the plaster on all, and all the little bits that could fall off this model. And I'm still not really convinced um, because I feel like this mixture covers up a lot of detail, but well, I'm giving it a try anyway. After it's dry we can start painting, 
as always I will be using my grey as a thick dry brush on the whole model because at this point I don't yet know where the stone will be and where the grass will be and where the dirt will be so I'm just covering it all in grey and as you can see even this first layer of dry brush or of heavy dry brush picks up the detail really nice. The next step is a really light dry brush with white and again I'm covering the whole model and you can see it already starts looking great. And if you want um, to have this really stony hill you could leave it like this but I wanted to have some more variety. And I experimented a little bit with it. Um, I wasn't sure how I want to do my ground so I started with a little brown dry brush I wasn't really happy so I tried with a brown wash of sorts um, but it also didn't quite work uh, how I wanted. So in the end I just covered all of the ground with a brown paint going into the small creases and cracks with a smaller brush and I also painted some details between the plaster pieces just to give an illusion of the stone cracking and eroding away. After that I'm using a black wash to make all the details more visible. It's a really magical stuff. Really a good dry brush and a good wash is everything you need to make your terrain pieces look great. Just look how it settles in all the dimples and creases and how it brings up the detail. But the wash makes it a little bit too dark for me so I'm dry brushing the piece with some beige or tan or however we want to call it. And I'm also not too shy about dry brushing the rocks because it gives it a little bit of a more eroded look, a little bit more interesting color palette. To be honest I still wasn't really happy with how it looked like, it was a little bit too uniform, so I took some white and dry brushed a small path onto it. After I was ready with the dry brushing I noticed that uh, on one of the hills there is a little bit of a dimple so to say so I tried making a puddle with some VA glue but it didn't really turn out how I wanted. Now for the finishing touches apply PVA glue and some flocking. Again I'm using my cut up herbs for the basic layer of uh, grasses or leaves or whatever. I don't try to read too much into what I'm doing it just looks nice and everyone can think of something else and whether it's grass or leaves I don't really care much. After that I'm using my foam flocking to imitate some moss or small bushes or something like that and I also put some in between the rocks again to give it some more character and make it more interesting. So in the end I'm really happy how it turned out. I'm ha I have to say that I'm even surprised that it came out as well as it did because you know I tried doing this before. I tried doing this uh, many years ago um, but I didn't use any speckle or any putty to mask the layers and it came out really really bad. Uh, also I'm happy that I finally tried out the old age-old trick with um, aluminium foil with the tin foil and plaster. So yeah I'm really happy. One thing that I definitely learned or I had known sort of before but I wanted to show it to you is that my magic mixture of salt and flour isn't really suitable for larger things like this you know. Um, when you put a big layer of this mixture it retains water really well and if you see if you look at this model it's still it's still really soft in places you know there is still water in the putty under the paint and seeping into the cardboard making it very soft. I hope it will um, dry out <laughs> soon. Um, it already spent a good few hours in the oven to dry out but it's still it's still kind of soft and it also warped a little bit. You, I don't think you can see it on camera but it wobbles a tiny bit when put on on a table. So using uh, my proprietary putty for things like this not really a good idea. Anyway, I hope you liked this, I hope you learned something and you're going to have a nice new addition to your wargaming or Dungeons and Dragons table. If you did like it, if you learned something, give me a like, subscribe, press the bell icon for more and yeah, I'll be seeing you. Bye!